Now, do you know the difference between a thought and a feeling? The thought is the voice in your head, or voices in your head, and a feeling is a physical experience in the body. Now, they are very often connected, but they are not the same thing. So the thought is in your head, and the feeling is in your body. Well, feelings, in the right circumstances, are entirely appropriate. They are part of your overall intelligence. If you, if you, were, in, if you were shut in this room with a very hungry monster, then to have those stress chemicals, the fight-or-flight chemicals rushing around in your body, could save your life. You'd fight off the monster or you'd run away. That, that's what it's for. Not for keeping you awake at four o'clock in the morning when the only thing that's attacking you are the thoughts in your head. There's no monster in the room, but the monster is in your head. Yeah, because our body doesn't understand the difference between what is real and what is imagined. So what the vast majority of time that we are awash with uncomfortable emotions, it's not because there's something here in reality that's causing that. It's not appropriate to the situation. Our body is responding to thoughts in our head. Am I making sense? Yeah? Anger. Yeah? I'll jump up now and put my hands around your throat. And a burst of anger would be useful, wouldn't it? You could shut me across the room or do whatever you do. But not so useful when it's stewing over something you read in the paper or, or something that an email you got yesterday or what so and so you think so and so might do tomorrow. Yeah, because the body's responding not to what's real, responding to what's imagined. Yeah. So there's connection between the thoughts and the feelings. As you start to see your, your mind worrying, if that's a tendency, look in the body, there's a there's a, an emotional, a physical response to that thought. Yeah, and they're connected, but they're not the same. Thoughts in your head, feelings in the body. Some really important things to understand about feelings. These feelings that come up in your body, these powerful, uncomfortable feelings. Whose are they? Whose feelings are they? Well, they're yours, aren't they? They're your feelings. So I want you to own your feelings. And that is such an incredibly powerful thing to do. Because once you take ownership of your feelings, you take away the world and other people's power to decide how you feel. All your time you're saying, this person's making me feel like this, or this situation's making me feel like that. Then you're going to be at the mercy of the world, aren't you? How you are will depend upon what the world is doing to you. And that's a very powerless place to be. So by making that, that realisation, now this is my feeling coming up in me. Yeah, this person's done something and, and there's anger there, but it's my anger. Now, once I, once I do that, I've taken away that person's power to make me feel any particular way. This is my feeling. It's anger in my body. I choose whether or not I become angry or not. Now, it's now down to me to, to take responsibility for that feeling and, and deal with it effectively rather than doing some harm with it to myself or other people. Yeah, but I can't begin to do that until I take ownership of it. Otherwise it's all their fault. It's them doing it to me. Well then you're in trouble. Yeah, I'm not saying the world is just and there's injustice and things go wrong. Yeah? But once we take ownership of our own feelings, it puts us in control of ourselves, our own lives, our own destiny. So, own your feelings. Yeah, there's anger in me. There's anxiety in me. There's irritation in me. That's fine. Yeah? They're my feelings. I choose how I respond. That's a powerful step. The other thing you need to understand about feelings, a common misconception about feelings. In truth, feelings are a good thing. It's so, so important that we feel. 
It is your ability to feel that connects you to other human beings. Absolutely imperative, we feel. There is far too little feeling going on in this world. Feeling is a very good thing. And the most dangerous people you will ever come across don't feel. They're called psychopaths. And they're running the banks and you'll find them a high level of government and, and institutions and political power, usually. Very few of them are in Broadmoor. Most of them do a lot more damage than that. Yeah. And the reason they can do more damage than that is because they don't feel. Yeah. They throw somebody out of their home because there's a few quid in it for them. Because they are detached from themselves. They're unemotional, mechanical, not really human. Yeah. It's our, it is our ability to feel our connection with our emotional selves that regulates our contact. Are people born like that? No, they're programmed like that. Yeah. So feeling is an incredibly good thing. Yeah. But, we're, but we're taught culturally to avoid our feelings. We shouldn't be feeling. We apologise for feeling. Mm. Yeah. Now, feelings don't have to damage you. And I'll sort of introduce some techniques that you can use to, to try and avoid that happening when it's all possible. Yeah, but it's always a very good thing to feel. So there are two things to remember. They're your feelings. They're coming from within you. And it's good that you're feeling. Very good that you're feeling. Yeah? And as you, as you move deeper with your mindful practice, what you'll come to see is actually the, the, the fulfilment that you've been looking for, that, that part of your lives that seems missing, is through feeling. But the, it, is the, it is through feeling that we open up the full, the full depth of what it is to be alive. Now, if we experience the world in that, and you're sure some of you are starting to get a glimpse of this in the practice this week, you know, that start to quiet in the mind and the world starts shining back. Whoa, look, it's in colour, it's 3D, whoa. Yeah. You didn't really notice before. Yeah. You didn't notice before because we weren't properly here. Yeah. And those really profound moments in your life. When you sort of look back at these, they're feeling based, aren't they? It wasn't at that moment that you discovered the refractive index of the sunset. You can suddenly figure it out. It was a, it's an emotional feeling based experience. So all the time we're avoiding our emotions, we're avoiding full depth to, to what it is to be alive and the, and the full depth to our human experience. And this goes completely against what we're taught. 